Okay, fry feeders. Targeting fry feeders is a huge, huge area, and it depends on the, the type of water that you're fishing and the fish that you're trying to catch. For example, we're in Rutland Harbour today. Um, if we were going to be fishing for fry feeders, we would be fishing near the pontoon. That brings its own risks in the fact there's chains coming off the pontoon which the fish can wrap you around. I think it's worth noting that fry feeding doesn't happen all day long. It's not like buzzers. When you're fishing for, with, for fish feeding on buzzers, it's a very small food source. Fry are much bigger, so they get full up. As I say, it's small periods of activity, usually for a couple of hours. So you must be on the right fly, the right method, in the right area, or else you just won't catch. I keep it simple. I stick to snakes in white or black. I stick to the humongous. I stick to suspender minkers if the fish want a fly that's, you know, a dead fly or a dead fry that's near the surface. Or I stick to a floating fly that gives a slightly different profile because it lies flat on the surface. They're probably the only flies that I'll use. They're tried and trusted, they're consistent and they work. Because you're fishing near weed beds, marker boys, chains, you need a, a good strong leader. There's no point whatsoever fishing six or eight pound. You need to fish 10 pound minimum, I would say. The hooks you're using are much stronger. They're not gonna bend out if you suddenly pile the pressure on. And as I say, it gives you a chance. Light leaders, light hooks, it's a recipe for disaster. Method-wise, if you're fishing, say, a minky or a humongous, a typical fry lure, again, usually you would make the cast and it would just be a standard two foot retrieve. Every now and again, just speeding it up so that any following fish is induced into the take and that will work. If, um, if you're fishing a suspender minky or a floating fry, it really is trial and error. You need to make the cast Fish it static for say 20 seconds, short six inch pulls to get that fly popping and causing a disturbance. Hopefully that will sound the dinner bell and pull the fish to the area and they'll take. Other times they might want it completely stack static. So again, it's very much trial and error. With a snake, again, it depends on the area you're fishing. If the area has received a lot of angling pressure, I would scale down the fly and I'd probably only fish, say, a four or five centimetre snake. Fish something smaller. Fish it totally unweighted and literally a slow figure of eight or an ultra slow roly poly. The fish will learn and they'll become accustomed that fast moving flies equal danger. Okay, with fry feeding, it's, it's a back end, what we call a back end activity. So that is associated with September, October, November. Um, the seasons do seem to be getting later and later. When I was a, a, a kid, I suppose, fry feeding was September time. Now it doesn't seem to happen until mid-November to the start of November. The fry tend to boil up um, round prominent features such as obviously marker boys, pontoons, jetties, um, big weed beds. You can usually see because there'll be cormorants or grebes working the area and the fry scattering like raindrops. As I say, it's a good indication there's fry there. And once you've got a big food source, whether that's fry, buzzers or shrimps, fish are never far away. 